Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and selecting my channel among the amazing amount of channels on YouTube and also a lot of channels that talk about pens. Here we see in front of you some pens. They're Jin House. They're Jin Hao 82s. And Jin Hao is certainly gone the distance in putting together combinations of colors and just interesting. And there's been a fairly good amount of buzz on the internet about these pens and all the different varieties and colors that they come in. And also the fact that they kind of look like cocktail pens. But to me, I don't care what they look like. I care about the pen that I have in front of me and whether I like it or not. And I find these colors to be quite interesting. These are the two latest ones that I got when I was buying my uh, Jin Hao filigree pens. These two were by the same seller. So I figured I'd give them a shot. They have gold trim, which differs them from the other ones. We'll call the Gen 1 ones. And these are the Gen 2 ones. They have the same nibs in them, the number 5 Jin Hao nibs, which has been consistently good. This has those finials of a different color than the cap and barrel, which is another interesting trait. So let's examine the two new pens in a little bit more detail, and let's see how that nib writes from Jin Hao. When I originally reviewed the 82s, I didn't think the finials came off, but I was mistaken. The bottom finial is just pressed on, no threading, so I was turning it, expecting it to unscrew, and it does it. The top finial is threaded on, so that does unscrew. So you can customize, frankenize, cocktail eyes, whatever you want to do with your 82s as far as mixing them up all your different colors. Here in the gold ones, this ring at the end of the barrel is loose, but again, they're the same type of customization available. And here's the nib and feed just pulled out of this section. And here's that nib assembly unscrewed. So you can do two things. And that number five nib is standard. So you can put uh, a whole plethora of different nibs in your 82 if you would like. I put a nice calligraphy nib in my black one here and it writes phenomenal. So let's explore these Jin Hao pens. First time I've gotten them delivered in this cardboard box sleeve. Obviously not designed for fountain pens, but keeps the pens safe and provides you with a box if you need one. So these are those transparent models that a lot of people have been very excited about. And yes, they are transparent. You can see through the barrel to the threads. Watch the nib turn around in the cap. I like the fact that the resin is repeated down through the section. We're going to explore one of these pens with those bent nibs. But what I think I thought, just to put things in perspective, because visually it's always good to have a reference. So here's an opaque red pen with silver trim. Not exactly, obviously, the same colors. This is more in the orange family, but you can get an idea of the difference between the pens and the look. And here's an opaque kind of avocado green. And this is more of a lemon yellow green, maybe lime color. But again, gold trim versus silver trim. So hopefully that gives you an idea. And these pens now come in incredible varieties. And I think a lot of uh, sellers are just buying bits and parts and maybe working with manufacturers to run different resins through the molds to give them more color, more variety. Interesting to see this pen evolve as it has. So I've gone through more details on this model. I like the O-ring there that when you put the barrel back on, you tighten it up, it feels it tightens up against that O-ring. Standard number five Jin Hao nib with that chariot on the nib collar. Uh, 
No O-ring, but I'll probably put a small O-ring down there at the bottom because I like that. Just a basic converter. This one I couldn't take apart, but then no need for it. Standard opening that Jin has been using for a long time. Let's just bring in the LED and see how transparent the pen is. Well, we've gone into dark mode, so the color of the pen looks a little different. But let's bring in the trusty LED light and shine it on that resin. Obviously, go from behind, and you'll see it's fairly transparent. There's that ledge there that seals up against the section to help keep the nib from drying out. And if we look in from the top, we'll see a nut there that holds the finial in place. And there's also a plastic liner pushed into place, what it appears to be. Yeah, a little bit different than what I expected, but works well. And the barrel, same thing like the cap. And there's that little transparency. So all, overall, for the price of this pen, which is generally around five US dollars, it's a nice pen. So obviously I'm gonna try a new ink. I haven't put this ink in a pen yet. Orange inks just need a certain pen, and I think this Jinhao kind of orangish pen, and yes, it does have some gold kind of glitter in it. Goes into suspension nice. We'll shake up that ink a lot before we put it into the pen. And here's what it looks like on Toma River paper. Let's see how it looks in that Fude nib. So here's the ink on the paper towel. You can see a little bit of glitter there, and I would say it's certainly burnt orange, if not in the brown family. But it's in the pen, and we're going to use it. So I've used a number of Fude nibs. This is about as Fude as they get. It's definitely mimicking a brush. You can get an incredibly wide line. It lays down a decent amount of ink, but not too much. And as you probably heard, it's very silent and quiet. No feedback. Very smooth. So if that's something that you want in a nib, this will certainly do that. Reverse writing is not really usable. Very, very thin line and uh, ink flow is not very good, so the line is not consistent, which sometimes fitting nibs can write good in reverse, but this one does not. I could probably work on it and make it work, but not my intention today. This is what the nib looks like, and I like this Tremel ink. It's like a burnt orange. So here's the pens I'll compare to the 82. It's a Pilot 78G and a Metropolitan. Both are substantially longer than the Jin Hao. The Jin Hao's girth, though, is probably slightly more than these other pens. Let's take the cap off, and they both post, all these post well, but let's take the cap off and look at the section and nib. Yes, you can see how well they post, deeply, securely, and a nice balance and feel in the hand posted. So here we have nib and section, and I really like this size and shape of the section on the 82. Pop Metropolitan is just too small for me, and so is the 78G for any type of long writing sessions. All these have similar to number five nibs, stub, fine point, and fude. Nice two-tone look to the Jin Hao, which sets it apart especially since it's significantly a lower price than these other two pens from Japan. So now it's time for some editorial comments and a final summation and some more writing. So the first thing that you're going to notice about this pen is it's on the small side. The cap takes 
a little bit over two turns to come off. I mean, I would say that that might be too short for a lot of people to use unposted. But thankfully, as we saw, it posts very deep, very secure, and really balanced well in your hand. So this is definitely a pen to post. I find that section about as small as I can deal with, but it feels good in the hand. Got a little flare out there at the bottom. As I mentioned, uh, if you're into the minutia of the details, check out my first 82 review, which I'll have links in the video description. So that's the summation for the pen. I think it's a great pen for the price. Again, with any pen, very personal. What someone likes, someone else may dislike. You know, one man's floor is another man's ceiling, etc., etc. But hopefully with a video review like this, you can determine whether this is a pen that you might want to have in your hand to write with. So one thing about the Tremor Link is it does bleed through a little bit. And this is fairly heavy Fabriano paper, 80 grams. And this ink is not necessarily known for bleed through, but put down enough ink, it will bleed through. Yes, the more vertical you hold the pen, the thinner the line. And when you hold it at a normal angle, it puts down an extremely broad line. I would say it's close to 1.5 millimeter. But unlike a stub, this is harder to change the look. With a stub, as you go horizontal and vertical, without changing the angle of your nib, you'll get more variation in your characters. So food aid nib is certainly not for everyone. I think everyone should at least try one, but be forewarned, you may or may not like it. So we reached the end of this video. Oh, and by the way, the 82 comes in a whole bunch of other nibs, extra fine and fine. And number five nibs are easy to swap out. And there's a lot of different varieties of them. You can get stubs, you know, not really broads in Chinese number fives, but 1.1 millimeter stub works nice. And if you get a hold of some Nemocene number five nibs, they also would work well. So we've reached a conclusion of this video. I want to thank all of you for watching. I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens. Enjoying putting some ink down. Hey, that's the fun part. So we've reached the end of this video, and we will write the end, and we will say bye. I can get used to this line in this nib. Certainly something different.